Let's make some 1850s baby dresses. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin and on this channel I teach old-fashioned sewing skills and make reproduction clothing. So that's what we're going to be doing today is reproducing some 1850s baby dresses. So last month I meant to make 1860s baby dresses. One of them ended up being a lot more 1860s and one of them a lot more 1850s. So we're calling this 1850s dress video, but one of them is going to be more 1860s and one of them is going to be 1850s. So I still end up with two 1850s and two 1860s baby dresses, if all that made sense. So what I have here is a bunch of very nicely, very expensive um, embroidery that is on a very wide, why it's so expensive because it's on a long piece and it's all along the edge so we can make a skirt out of this I have another piece to it and then I have matching embroidery that is smaller so we're gonna make the 1850s one out of this I have a lot more just laces and such and then I have this original 1860s toddler dress it's very tiny it looks like it was very small toddler but it's definitely post shortening so once baby started to crawl they were they reached the point of what was called shortening. Basically, the skirts got shortened from those really long skirts to shorter skirt lengths so the babies could actually walk and move and, and do all the baby things in them. So this is an original dress that was post-shortening. You can see how tiny it is. It was a very small child that started to crawl. But we have insertion here, here, and here, and little edging on either side of these two. No edging on this one, edging here. Same edging here edging on the sleeves, skirt has some tucks, and edging. We're just going to make it a lot longer. So I have here some batiste. I think we're going to start by cutting out everything, making sure I have enough fabric and pieces, and we'll get to sewing. We are going to stitch these on machine. So this is 1850s, and 1850s have sewing machines. My general rule for this type of thing is anything pre-1850 gets hand-stitched. So next month when we do 1840s baby dresses, those will be entirely hand-stitched as well the 1830s and 1820s and 18 teens baby dresses. But for 1850s we are still get we still get to use the sewing machine. And unfortunately I don't have a good sewing machine for 1850s. I have one that basically is an 1858 model, but it's 1858 that would have been good for the 1860s baby baby clothes. However, for you know 1850s that type of machine and that stitch that it does was not around yet. So we are going to use the modern machine behind me because it gives a lock stitch, which is period appropriate even though the machine is not. But once the stitch is done, you can't tell what kind of machine it was sewn on. So last month, I took a pattern off one of the original baby dresses, and I have the pattern here, and I'm going to use this traced off pattern from the other original to cut both of these dresses. All right, I'm cutting out pieces. This sleeve is very different than the one in the other bodice, so I'm gonna go ahead and trace this off the best I can. This is gonna be fun, because it's a very gathered sleeve. So we're going to try our best. And then this goes probably up there. And it goes up a little bit because it's gathered there as well, but not very much. Probably on fold. Okay. I know you probably couldn't see that very well because of the, how rolled up this is. Now I gotta add seam allowance. Cutting the sleeve, or not sleeves, um, skirt I think is my next order of business. So, okay, that's the sleeve. Other end of this is my skirt end. Okay, so let's do a little bit of measurements here on this original. So, I have to completely disregard the skirt length because it's so short. It's post-shortening. We are going to measure, we have three half-inch tucks. That's one inch, two inch, three inch. And those are quarter-inch tucks? Yes. One, two, three. It's an inch and a half. Inch and a half, so that's three inches. So that's six added inches to whatever our skirt length is. And usually skirt lengths top out around 36 inches. They can be a little shorter than that. I think our other ones end up being 27 inches long because that's how long the fabric is. So we'll make this one longer. We'll do 36. So we're gonna cut it 
well, 42 would be what we need. We also need seam allowance and turn it over at the top. So we're gonna cut it 43 inches long. All right, so we're gonna work on skirts first. I've already stitched them up. I'm now felling them uh, because at least on the embroidered skirt, it was uh, raw edges and there's one raw edge on the other skirt that I needed to fell, but the other one ended up being selvage and you don't have to fell selvages. Now the skirt is done, the embroidered one. The other one we now have to hem and put tucks in, which is going to take quite a bit of time. But there's not very many tucks, so when I made the one that had 21 tucks, I learned that my limit is 15 tucks. This one only has 12, so we should be okay. Alright, so for both bodices, we are now going to sew the backs to the fronts. We are also going to need to fill these seams. And then I'm going to figure out what we're going to do for the de decoration on both of them. So one of them I know what we're going to do. For the solid embroidered one, I don't have enough of the embroidery to do the whole front. So I'm going to figure out how I'm going to manage that. Alright, so we are working on the bodices. For the 60s one, I have it pinned, so it looks like this. And for reference, the original is smaller. I'm making a slightly larger bodice so it can fit for longer on a child. But that's essentially what we see on the original. So one straight down the middle, and then two that are diagonal that go from the sleeve all the way to meet so the edges of the center one match with the edges of the outer ones. So that's what I did here. I haven't done anything to the back. It's just going to be kind of gathered up and looking like that. So that's what we're at now. The embroidery on this side, or the, the insertion is actually antique or at least vintage. We use it in a couple other projects. This is just regular old white work. So for the 50s one, I'm kind of copying a dress somewhat. And so the whole centerpiece is just insertion. So I'm sewing together bits of insertion to fit into that shape. So I have this going on so far. Do I need one more or two? Probably more like two. So I really don't need very much of this. Be like right that. And so I've just been sewing it all together. So I get one big piece of insertion, then we'll stitch it onto the bodice. But this is a modern insertion. The entredeaux, so the um, pull thread work, it's a lot bulkier than period stuff, but the original does have some pull thread work as well, so we're going to keep it. Alright, so now we have that sewn on. So the original showed a seam right on the very edge, and then about a quarter inch and another seam. And then on the back, what they did is they just cut the excess of the bodice off just raw straight across that uh, one that's got a quarter inch from the edge of the insertion it was left raw and it hasn't been a problem so far this many years later so I think we're good so we're just gonna do the exact same thing on this front side it looks like this I'm gonna do that on both bodices all right so we are gonna bind the top and bottom so the bottom just got a little bit of plain white cotton I'm putting some edging the same edging that we put up here on the top. Alright, we're at the point where we can put tucks in the other skirt, and after that it's all hand sewing. Alright, tucks are done, so all I gotta do now is iron it out. I did put my ducks a little bit further apart than the originals, and I did that on purpose, only because I've seen this before, and their skirt was, and the original skirt was of course a lot shorter than my skirt. So just to take up a little bit more of this longer skirt in, you know, decoration so it's not, you know, completely plain. Just space them out a little bit. Then on the very top we're going to fold it over about half an inch. At this point we have a whole bunch of handwork. So, uh, gauging first, which is gathering this part. 
Then we'll be attaching it to the waistband, adding ties, all that good stuff. And of course that's after we make sure that the bodice is, um, or the binding on the bodice is done. All right, so, all right, so first off, this is the neckline binding that needs to be finished off. Little whoop stitches. We're gonna put the cord in there in just a moment. We're gonna do the gauging first. I find it easier to do the gauging first because then I don't have to worry about, you know, accidentally catching the cord that's used to, you know, drawstring in the waist. And then the only other thing on the other dress that we'll need to do is I have not finished off the sleeves. The um, sleeve hem is going to be far too narrow uh, to do by machine. I'm going to do that whole thing by hand. So I will need to do that before we're ended. But other than that, we're basically nearly done. So we have a sleeve to trim. I did one so it looks basically like a normal sleeve except it is gathered at the top. The original was gathered at the top and gathered at the bottom but because, but I didn't take into account that the original was a smaller bodice than this is and so I wanted to make sure that a baby's arm even with like little fat rolls could fit through here so I opted not to gather the bottom part because I just don't think that's going to be a whole lot of room um, but I did gather it at the top a little bit. I'm cutting out one of the sides so that I can fill it with just a little bit of bulk and not a lot of bulk. For less bulk in that seam, so have a nice little straight finished edge and I can just whip this closed. All right, sleeves are done. So Put that back right side out. So the only thing left to do is to add a drawstring. So the original looks like what it, it looks like it has cotton pearl on it. Something super simple, a little bit thinner than, this is sugar and cream yarn that I'm using, but thicker than the size eight and 10 cord that I keep for um, piping. So I'm thinking it might be a size three crochet cotton, which I don't keep. But if we're gonna do a lot more of these baby clothes, I might go invest in some. At which point I would replace this, but this will work for right now. It's only a little bit thicker. The weave is a bit looser as well. What did it get caught on? What did I do? Okay. we have a couple of baby dresses. All right, there they are. Trying a little bit of different placements instead of putting them on the table, I hung them up. Maybe you can see a little bit more about them all at once. All right, and here the dress is done. Uh, try something a little bit different with, uh, instead of putting them on the table, hanging them, maybe you can see a little bit more. Um, at least we can see the whole dress at once, which is really nice, and I'll do some close-ups in a little bit. But yeah, uh, one's very clearly longer than the other, which I expected because the embroidered fabric on that side was only 27 inches long. So it is shorter than what we have been doing because that's more 30, so that one's more 36, 37 inches long. So just about 10 inch difference, but it's not, but it's not a bad thing because you do actually see baby dresses that length. I prefer the longer ones. I think they look a lot nicer for babies who aren't walking, of course, to kind of have that cascading effect on the arm of the person who's holding said infant. I think it just looks adorable. So I like the longer ones, but the shorter ones, you see those as well. In fact, even, um, in fact, when we start making like lower class baby dresses, which is going to be a thing, a thing I need to get to pretty soon actually, because I have a lot of fabric that's like spilling out of 
it's been, um, but it's all supposed to be baby stuff. So uh, when we get to that, that'd be great to get, get rid of some fabric. However, a lot of the poor dresses are supposed to be shorter, just covering the baby's feet, or it's just a little bit longer. So they'll be a lot shorter. However, I'm actually kind of excited about this length because I'm pretty sure I can put some pretty fancy tucks into that thing and easily make it for um, a short, and easily make it a shortened gown, which is going to make my life so much easier. With the tucks, I probably can do the same with that one, but this one's going to lend itself a little bit more to shortening. So this dress will be probably worn a whole lot more for an infant than some of my other longer dresses. But again, I can finish that tuck pattern almost all the way up and see how short we can get it. I don't know if it'll be short enough for baby, but maybe we can get it to that point. I don't want to cut any of them because multiple kids, I don't want to make these over again. I'd rather make shortened dresses. But I know that one can easily be put tucks in and I can take them out with the first kid's done with it and the second kid needs it. So I think that would actually work out really well. I kind of, I actually really like that. But I am really super excited about that embroidery. I mean, it is adorable. The whole thing turned out just so cute. I think these are the ones, out of all the dresses we've done so far, I think these are the ones I'm most proud of, which is weird because I did all that, you know, hand embroidery in high school for that other one last month. No, I think I like these better. More specifically, I like that one. That one's my favorite. It's adorable. I was so pleased with it. So do some little close-ups so you can kind of see the skirts here. Uh, clearly the tucks are not even, I don't know how that got so off on those tucks, but again, I've seen originals that are off, so I'm not particularly concerned with it. I think it'll just be fine. And of course our beautiful embroidery on the other side, which is just lovely and makes me so happy. I especially love, again, that one on the right. It's just so adorable. It's so frilly and fancy. It's going to look really nice as the toddler dress too. I'm actually super excited about putting tucks into it and make it an, an older baby's dress as well. And it's not to say I don't like this one. I think it's adorable too. It's just, I really like the other one. And I think it's because it's a little bit more fancy. It's not quite as interesting as the front, but there are the backs. So you can see it is much plainer than the front, of course, but again, it's the back. And the drawstring works really well. Um, of course, putting in any drawstring after you do all the handwork is always the best idea because then you don't have to worry about catching it. And I'll be on the hunt for that larger crochet cotton. I think they sell size three. I think it goes up to size two or three. And I think that's about the size of the original. So I, that's what I'm gonna be looking for. And whenever I come across that, I'll buy that and replace the yarn. But it does make me very happy knowing I don't have to braid the tinier stuff anymore. I mean, there's, in the period they had a lot more options because the other ones, the other, my all, all my other originals were always a 16th inch tape, which I can't find in white. I can find a natural, I can't find white. So no, seeing this other one with more of a actual cord, that's just a thick cord, not quite yarn, but a very thick cord, makes me really happy because that's gonna be a really easy tie to accomplish from now on. And I'm just super excited about these dresses. I think they're adorable. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me today as we made our little 1850s baby dresses. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell notification so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here in the next one.